I'm now delighted to introduce our keynote speaker, Executive Director Chad Dion Lassiter. Chad Lassiter is a national expert in the field of American race relations. Lassiter has worked on race, peace and poverty related issues in the United States, Africa, Canada, Haiti, Israel, and Norway, and is called upon frequently by media outlets to provide commentary on race relations and potential solutions. He is the current executive director of the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission, where he has continued to push the Commonwealth forward in the spaces of DEI training, unconscious bias training, and anti-racism training. He has developed and launched a No Hate in Our State town hall to address the surge of white nationalism in Pennsylvania, a social justice lecture series providing an outlet for Pennsylvania communities to discuss imperative issues, and serves as a racial reduction response team for those communities impacted by hatred. He oversees a staff of 87 with three regional offices that comprise the 67 counties in Pennsylvania and manages an annual budget of $11 million. Executive Director Lassiter received his master's degree from the University of Pennsylvania Graduate School of Social Work, where he was the A. Philip Randolph Award winner in 2001 and was the recipient of the University of Pennsylvania's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Community Involvement Award in 2008. Executive Director Lassiter is a co-founder and current president of the University of Pennsylvania's School of Social Policy and Practices Black Men at Penn the first Ivy League black male group of social workers. Since 2003, this transcendent group has sought to recruit black males into the profession, as well as provide anti-racism and violence prevention training to urban and suburban schools around the country, and diversity and inclusion training for corporate entities and penal systems. Executive Director Lassiter was chosen as the National Association of Social Workers Pennsylvania chapter Social Worker of the Year for 2021. So please join me in welcoming Executive Director Chad Lassiter. Good morning. If we can have our graduates stand, all of our graduates, if you could just stand. <clears throat> And just remain standing for a moment, we're going to engage in a form of call and response. From the stage, I'm going to say infinite hope, and then you're going to say infinite hope. And then I'm going to say infinite hope, and then you're going to say infinite hope. When we get to the third stanza of infinite hope, you're going to say infinite hope, but when you get to hope, I want you to hold on to it as if we were at the big house. Right? So it should go something like this. I'll say infinite hope, you'll say infinite hope. I'll say infinite hope, you'll say infinite hope. I'll say infinite hope, you'll say infinite hope. And let's see how long we can hold it, okay? <laughs> and just a full disclosure, I come from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but I am not a Nittly Lion fan, <laughs> nor am I an Ohio State Buckeye. <laughs> I have no idea what those two entities are, but I know what a Wolverine is. I go all the way back to the days of Bo Schembechler and the quarterback, Elvis Gerback. That's how far I go back. So let's do our call and response, and thank you for indulging me. Infinite hope. Infinite hope. Infinite hope. Thank you. Thank you, Dean, faculty, staff, and students for the invitation to be your 2022 commencement speaker. I'm humbled and honored on various levels. It is humbling to stand before you, especially after such a wonderful and gracious introduction by your Dean. And know that while you will listen politely, chuckle at my attempts at humor, and later possibly collapse graciously as I take my seat. You will not remember anything I say today. 
and that's okay. Because remembering me or my speech is not the priority of such a special day. This is your day. And what needs to be your most important job today is turning this celebratory moment of your work and your struggles into one of your most joyous of memories. In fact, why don't you all just take a mindful minute to look around and absorb the beauty, the pomp, and the circumstance of it all. When I went to college during orientation, they, of course I can't remember their names, told us frightened freshmen to look to our right and to look to our left. Someone then said, one of you won't make it. Today, I say, look to your left. Now look to your right. Please take a moment to give yourself and your fellow classmates a hand. You have made it. How could any words be more impactful than the feeling you have now? Who can compete with that wonderful sense of accomplishment you feel? That is the reason I'm going to start with the end of my speech. For years, you've been taught to start with an introduction, but I'm going to turn that upside down today and begin with the most important part of my message. My final points will be my beginning. I have three points to share with you today. Just three things that I'm asking you to ponder as you go forth to build a full, of, uh, to build a life of well-being, purpose, and meaning. First, there are things in your life that if you want to live well, must be forgotten. Second, there are things in your life that if you want to live well, must be remembered. And my third point, you must learn for yourself what to forget and what to remember. These are my three points, the essential ingredients of this speech to you. I hope I have ignited a bit of curiosity that will encourage you to follow me a little deeper into this talk, straight into the explanation of why I'm formulating this out. What is memory? Scientists define memory as a stored pattern of connections between neurons and the brain. Memory is about 100 billion neurons, each of which can make perhaps 5,000 to 10,000 synaptic connections with other neurons, which makes a total of about 500 trillion to 1,000 trillion synapses in the average adult brain. These synapses can be strengthened or they can be weakened. Truly, memory is awe-inspiring. Our memories are trivial as well as the traumatic and they make up who we are. Your memories have made you who you are. So, our memories are not insignificant, which means our memory should be handled carefully and respectfully. At its core then, remembrance and forgetting are all about connections. With remembrance, we deepen and embrace connections. We hold them tight. With forgetting, we sever connections, flinging them as far away as possible and hope that they don't boomerang. Even when so many of us attend the same event, like this commencement ceremony, we will remember and forget differently. If you don't believe me, just wait until your first reunion. Now let's talk about forgetting. Scientists think that forgetting unwanted memories may help preserve our mental health, especially those memories that make us anxious or make us depressed. There are some things that by actively remembering will get in the way of living to our fullest potential. Forgetting allows the past to fade away and make room for the business of living in, participating in, and fully enjoying the present. Forgetting can allow you to go into your next stage of life as a fully present and engaged participant, ready to embrace a new beginning. What do you need to forget to get on with the business of living well? Let me quote an author, Stephen Carpenter. Carpenter says the following, people always talk about how hard it can be to remember things where they left their keys or the name of an acquaintance, but no one ever talks about how much effort we put into forgetting. I am exhausted from the effort to forget. 
there are things that have to be forgotten if you want to go on living. Let me say that one more time. There are things that have to be forgotten if you are to go on living. But this type of active, intentional forgetting is demanding, hard, emotional work. Let me read you another quote about forgetting and its benefits. First, you forget everything you learn. You especially forget everything you didn't really learn, but you memorized the night before. You forget the names of all but one or two of your teachers, and eventually you forget those too. You forget your junior class schedule and where you used to sit and your best friend's home phone number and the lyrics to that song you must have played a million times. For me, it was something by Simon and Garfinkel. Who knows what it will be for you? And eventually, but slowly, oh so slowly, you forget your humiliations. Even the ones that seem indelible, they just fade away. You forget who was cool and who was not, who was pretty, smart, athletic, or not, who went to a good college, who threw the best parties, who got you pot. You forget all of them, even the ones you said you love, and even the ones you actually did. They're the last to go. And then once you've forgotten enough, you love someone else. That is a quote from Gabrielle Zevin, author of Memories of a Teenage Anomsiac. She explains it so lyrically that all I have to do now is reiterate my first point. There are things in your life that if you want to live well, must be forgotten. And now, now let's talk about remembering. Your graduation, this major milestone in your life, should be remembered. And not just remembered, but turned into a joyous memory. Today, you are surrounded by people who care, family who walk this journey alongside you, friends who may have been your best friends and will be your life friends forever, partners with whom you shared all your mistakes and all your miseries, instructors and staff for whom you graduating is also their mission. Let's give them a hand. But that isn't all. In just the past few years, so many people have walked in and out of your life. But who were the ones who took the time to make a meaningful impression on you? How many showed you the kindness at just the right moment? Showed you love when you needed it? Displayed with truth when you begged for it? These two are the types of people you should not allow yourself to forget. So please take this minute and ask yourself, who made the greatest significant positive impression on me? How will I remember this person? How will I honor this person? And how will I pay it forward for what they instilled in me? Intentional remember like forgetting is hard emotional work. It takes a concentrated effort. Let's begin by offering a round of applause to demonstrate our gratitude for those families, friends, lovers, teachers, administrators, and staffers who took time with you or for no other reason except you matter. Let's take a moment to thank them all and to give them a well-deserved hand or a hug for all of their support, for all of their dedication, for all of their love. As Arthur R.J. Policio has written, we should be remembered for the things we do. The things we do are the most important things of all. They are more important than what we say or what we look like. The things we do outlast our mortality. The things we do are like monuments that people build to honor heroes after they have died. They are, the pyra they are like the pyramids that the Egyptians built to honor the pharaohs. Only instead of being made out of stone, they are made out of the memories people have of you. That's why your deeds are like monuments, built with memories instead of with stone. No one is a better example of deeds becoming monuments than the University of Michigan School of Social Work's own Jim Toy. Listen to how he was described by those who knew him best. A warrior for equality, a relentless activists, 
a fierce champion for human rights. So he came out as gay when it could have been professional suicide to do so, but he went on to help establish the university Spectrum Center, which serves the LGBTQIA community and help pave the way towards acceptance related to sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. His achievements were historic because he turned his life into his mission. Jim Toy died this year at 91 years old. As a way of honoring his legacy in perpetuity, the School of Social Work, with the support of two generous donors, has established the Jim Toy MSW 81 Scholarship Fund. Jim Toy exemplifies my second point. There are things in your life that if you want to live well, must, must be remembered. Finally, let me end with my beginning. Life is a journey. And this day, momentous as it is, is but one stop on your lifelong trip. And during this journey, you will have to decide each day what to forget and what to remember because your decision will determine your quality of life. The problem is there is no textbook to guide you. There are no PowerPoint slides. There is no sample test to prepare you for the final or any notes to borrow. There is no one to cheat off of there is no speech that can give you a bullet list of five things to do. Additionally, there is no Brennan's ecological systems theory or no philomological variant of ecological systems theory. And that leads me to my final point today. The secret to a good life is knowing what to forget and what to remember. You will wrestle with what this means for you throughout your life. I urge you to be like Jim Toy and not back away from the struggle. Before I take my seat, let me leave you with one recommendation for going through the struggle. Intentionally make joyous memories. Remember what I said at the beginning of the speech? This is your day. And what needs to be your most important job today is turning this celebratory moment of your work and your struggle into one of your most joyous memories. How do you make something joyous? Well. You thread laughter and silliness and good conversation and true gratitude through all, throughout all of your life's events. The special, like today's graduation, and the ordinary. This is a good starting point because the memory of those moments will help you through the tougher times, through the negativity that you are bound to face, the anxiety you will certainly feel, the loneliness that will make your heart ache, the failures that will make you question every decision you've ever made, the tragedies you will endure, the endings you will lament, and the beginnings you will fear. Joyous memories are a true antidote against the feelings of despair and hopelessness. So let's all take one last moment together and take a mental shot, a mental snapshot of this time together. You will want to travel back to this time to remember being surrounded by nothing but delight and achievement by friends and family and faculty. So that when you face your next challenge, and you will, and doubt tries to bring you down, and it will, you will remember this day and know that you can surmount anything. So be, even if you forget everything I just said over the past few minutes, please remember this. Cherish this beautiful moment. And in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope.